It's two for Tuesday. We got two questions on the bench press. Good morning. Happy Tuesday. I have neural coffee in hand and it is perfect. All right. So it's Tuesday and that means it's bench press day. Um, but it isn't every day bench press day. We had a couple questions that came through in regards to the bench press. Mike Robertson and I recently posted um, the first part of a tutorial on, on super impressing. So it just seemed like uh, bench press is just very prominent um, in my mind right now. So we're going to go with it today and we're going to attack two questions um, specifically about this. So the first one comes from Norman and Norman says, um, in my, my past coaching experience, I've accidentally come across a strategy for helping powerlifters lock out better for those who stall the lockout. The strategy was to cue a forceful exhalation. Is this because the exhalation is biased towards extension and internal rotation, according to your model? And does that cue in the bench press allow you to capture that extension and internal rotation? Can you please expand on this thought? So I think you're, you're on point here, uh, Norman. Um, first things first, let me point you towards, um, there's a couple of videos on YouTube um, that you'll find in regards to lockout strategies that, that may also be of interest to you. Um, so, so, so please go there. Um, one of the things that we want to recognize about lifting heavy things in all situations is that we are looking at an exhalation bias. So, so when we look at capturing range of motion, we're going to use inhalation, expansion, eccentric orientation, all those concepts are geared towards us acquiring positions. But when it comes to force production, it is it is exhalation, compression, constant orientation. And, and again, this is where all the force production lies. And we need both, obviously, to execute any, any exercise. So we have some form of excursion of the joints that, that we have to move through to execute a, a bench press, um, but we want to minimize we want to minimize the eccentric orientation because eccentrically oriented muscle doesn't have tension on it; it doesn't produce force. And so, so again, when we're looking at at these strategies across the board when we're talking strength training, we want to we want to maximize concentric orientation, exhalation, compression. So if we consider the setup of the bench press, everything is designed for maximizing compression. So we talk about the arch position. So, so that's a posterior compressive strategy that we're, that we're using to minimize any form of expansion. We've got a scapular position that is compressing two bones against the back of the thorax so it cannot expand. The bench in and of itself, the, the pressure under the bench enhances all of those things. We want to think about neck position. So, so in, in this circumstance, you're going to see an, an orientation of, of the, the cranium on top of the neck such that it pulls the hyoid bone up. So the hyoid bone goes up, it compresses the, the airway, and so we minimize our ability to expand. And it also helps us to perform the Vesalva maneuver, which is an exhalation strategy. So Vesalva is an exhalation against a closed glottis. So it, that is um, another attempt to raise pressure internally. And so again, so we do, do, do all these things to minimize, minimize eccentric orientation so our force production goes up. So you are 100% correct, Norman, that everything that we're doing in this circumstance is, is an exhalation bias. And by cueing the strong exhalation um, at, at lockout, you're going to enhance their ability to lock it out. Now, here's what I would caution you against. If you release too much pressure, if you release the pressure too soon, through an exhalation, they're gonna fail the lift. So there's an element of timing that's gonna be associated with this. And so in most cases, what you're gonna see is you're gonna you're gonna see people maintain their breath hold throughout, or you're gonna hear like the smallest little grunt or or groan as they are they are locking this out because we wanna minimize, we wanna minimize that release. We tend to let the air out under these circumstances so we can actually capture the position. So again, we need external rotation. We need some eccentric orientation to achieve positions, but we want to minimize that. So, so Norman, thank you for that question. I hope that answers it for you. Now, second question comes from Anthony. And Anthony says, I'm noticing a lot of stronger lifters are lifting their heads off the bench in a bench press. Why is this happening? So, Anthony, I got a video recommendation for you. Go to, I believe it's June of last year, where we're answering a question for Vikram in regards to neck position during the bench press. And so, so what you're going to see is you're going to see um, a, a cervical flexion orientation in, in many cases. And again, part of this 
is this anterior compressive strategy in the neck to help reduce the, the airway size to create compression, force production, enhance the valve and the exhalation bias. But we have situations now where we have people that are getting very, very strong and so they are, they are really maxing out their ability to, to concentrically orient, to IR and exhale. Well, these are force production positions and they also stop ranges of motion from occurring. And so what we need now is the minimal amount of external rotation, eccentric orientation to acquire a position. So in many cases, so these are, these are gonna be your stronger individuals. They're gonna be more hypertrophied. They might be using some assistive equipment like a bench press shirt to even maximize um, the, the compressor strategy even farther. So, but they still have to touch the bar to their chest. And so what you're gonna see is actually a cervical flexion substitution that's going to allow enough movement for that bar to get to their chest. So if we look at a cervical flexion range of motion substitution, so what I have here is an individual um, who is who is compressed anterior posterior in the upper thorax. And so you can see as he bends his head forward, you can see the prominence of the lower cervical spine moving towards flexion. And so what this is, is this is an external rotation substitution. So this allows just enough external rotation to occur through the shoulder girdle to allow them to, to make the, the, the contact with their chest with the bar so they can, they can truly complete uh, the bench press. You're also gonna see this, just a little FYI, you're also gonna see this occur most likely in the lumbar spine under the circumstances of somebody trying to gain depth in a squat. And so they go hand in hand. So whenever you see this, this uh, cervical substitution, you're probably gonna see the lumbar substitution as well. So guys, I appreciate your questions. I hope they, they lead you in a good direction. If you have other questions, go to askbillhartman at gmail.com, askbillhartman at gmail.com, and we'll see you guys tomorrow.